open presents already this morning. I want to see who you are. Man, mine are waiting for me at the house, Marcia. <laughs> I, mine are waiting. At least I hope I got some. I don't mind getting presents. I don't know about you all, but I don't mind getting them. I've never had a problem drawing the line between Christmas celebrating the birth of our Lord Jesus and Santa Claus and the presents. I've never had a problem with that. I, that just, I could keep those segmented pretty good. I knew what Christmas was. You celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus, our Savior, God come to us. Never had a problem with that. Like that gift thing, I just like getting gifts and like giving, don't you? Um, and that old fat guy with the beard, I liked him when I was little pretty good. I really did. I liked him pretty good. So uh, I never had a problem with that. I love just what Christmas stands for, all of it all bundled up, and it's good. We can, we can, get it, get, we can let it get lopsided, can't we? Well, if we're not careful, we can let it get lopsided and be focused on the, the materialistic and so on and so forth. But um, anyway, it's a, it's a great, great time to uh, celebrate and be together as family. Amen? Amen. So to see you all here this morning speaks well of you. I don't know if you have uh, any problem uh, celebrating Christmas. I don't know if you... Uh, just don't seem to be able to, to get enough reasons to celebrate Christmas. So I'm just going to kind of play like that maybe this morning you just don't have all the, you just don't have what it takes to just celebrate Christmas. You're just kind of on the edge. You just can't seem to make that step. Well, I hope maybe I'll give you a little bit of encouragement this morning that will help you to be able to celebrate Christmas. And if you saw the title of my message, it says, Five reasons why we can celebrate Christmas. So I, I hope it'll be an encouragement to you. I will tell you, it took me a long time to pick out my five, not because there wasn't very many to pick out. There could have been so many. There's a lot of reasons why we can celebrate Christmas. Not only just the birth of Christ and Him coming uh, as, as a baby into this world, but uh, just uh, many, many other reasons. So I picked out five of what I thought were maybe the more uh, stood out the most and maybe were more meaningful to me. So I'm going to share those with you this morning. Five reasons why we can celebrate Christmas. But first, I'd like for us to read, and actually, I don't think any of my message comes from the text, but you know what? If it's Christmas morning, you ought to read the Christmas story, shouldn't you? So we're going to read it. So go to Luke chapter 2, if you would, and we're going to read verses 1 through 20. <clears throat> and as I normally do, I'm reading out of the New uh, American Standard. Luke chapter 2, reading 1 through 20. Now in those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that a, a census should be taken in all the inhabited earth. This was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone was on his way to register for the census, each to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the family of David, in order to register along with Mary, who was engaged to him and who was with child. While they were there, and the days were completed for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son. And she wrapped him in clothes and laid him in a manger because there was, there was no room for them in the inn. In the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them. And the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. 
When the angels had gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds began saying to one another, let us go straight to Bethlehem then and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has made known to us. So they came in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby as he lay in the manger. When they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been told them about this child. And all who heard it wondered at the things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary treasured all these things, pondering them in her heart. The shepherds went back glorifying and praising God for all that he had heard, for all that they had heard and seen, just as had been told them. Father, we thank you that you recorded the story of the birth of our Lord Jesus. God, a tremendous thing, you coming to us as a baby. We're thankful. We bless you. Happy birthday, Lord Jesus. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Five reasons why we can celebrate Christmas. Are you ready? Number one, we can celebrate Christmas because God really wants to be with us. He really wants to be with us. You remember the name Emmanuel, God with us. You know, all across America today, there are people going, Oh, my mother and dad, mother in law, and father in law are coming for Christmas. <laughs> Some people got that phone call a couple of weeks ago Hey, we're coming to spend Christmas with you. Oh, that'll be great. They're coming to spend Christmas with us. You know. Uh, there's some places that, you, you know, they're just not excited about the folks that are coming over. Here's the bad news. There's some of the folks y'all are going to see. They're not happy about y'all coming over. <laughs> <clears throat> so uh, that works two ways, doesn't it? But, you know, we find in Isaiah, recorded in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 4. We find this name, Emmanuel. I'm going to read it to you. Isaiah 7, verse 4. I said 7, verse 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin will be with child and bear a son, and she will call his name Emmanuel, God with us. 700 years before Christ was born, 700 years, God put in the mind of Isaiah to write about the coming Christ, Emmanuel, God with us. He wants to be with us. Then we find recorded in Matthew chapter 1, Matthew goes back and comments and uh, speaks that word that came through Isaiah from God, Matthew 21, or Matthew 1, 21 through 23. So Joseph got up, took the child and his mother, and came to the land of Israel. I'm wrong on that, excuse me. Matthew 1, 21 through 23, I've got to get this together. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, and he quotes Isaiah, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. God wants to be with us. He desires that. We can celebrate Christmas because he really wants to be with us. Now, here's what's so interesting to me. God is God. He could have done this any way he wanted to. He's God. He could have decided to send Gabriel down and had him be sacrificed. He would say, no, it had to be. No, God's God. He could have done this any way he wanted to. He could have decided, you know what? There's going to be a special cow that's going to be slaughtered in Judah. <clears throat> and I'm going to make, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to make that the sacrifice. He could have done it any way he wanted to. 
but he chose to come to us himself. Why? Because God wants to be with us. He truly wants to be with us. There are some folks today who maybe um, are alone. And they may be alone emotionally. I mean, they're just, they may be all covered up with people in a house for Christmas, but they're alone, alone, <clears throat> excuse me, I apologize. <clears throat> they're alone emotionally. They're just separated from folks, broken. There's some folks who are physically alone. I know some people today who are by themselves in a home and they have no Christmas to celebrate with anybody. You have folks that are, that are surrounded by people who are mostly alone. You have people who are physically alone. You have some folks who are spiritually alone this morning who don't know Christ. Christmas doesn't mean doodly to them other than maybe gifts and that type of thing. They're alone. Mostly alone, spiritually alone, physically alone. Here's the good word. If you know Christ, He's your Lord and Savior, you are not alone. Emotionally, excuse me, spiritually, physically, if you know Christ, you're not alone. Why? Because Emmanuel, God with us. He wants to be with us today. Number two, we can celebrate Christmas because God shares his home with us. Now, I was going to insert a word, and I thought, you know, I better not say it because some people will take it wrong. But you know what? I, I'm going to say it. We can celebrate Christmas because God shares his party with us. They say, what? You know, in heaven, it's going to be a great time. Y'all agree with that? Well, here's the deal. It ain't going to be a great time when you get there. It doesn't become a great time when Gary gets there. It's already a great time, Gary. Okay? You ain't going to bring the party to them. <laughs> it's already, it's good. It'd be better. Well, yeah, it, but it'll be a little better, Gary. Good gosh. She's going to get it in there one way or the other, isn't it? The party's already going on. The joy's already in heaven. It's a great place already. When we go, we're going to join the party. Well, I want you to know, we can celebrate Christmas because God shares his home or the party with us. He came to us and he brought the party. He brought home to us. Let me talk a little bit more about that. I want you to go to Philippians chapter 2, okay? Philippians chapter 2. And we're going to look at verses 5 through 8. Chapter 2 of Philippians, verses 5 through 8. And I read, Having had this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant and being made in the likeness of man. Being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. He came to the earth, bringing heaven to us. Can you think of a better way If there was a family you wanted to go see for Christmas, but you couldn't go, I just, I'll tell you what, I'll use, for instance, my two sons. My two boys are getting ready to move over to San Francisco. You know what? You just don't go see somebody in San Francisco anytime you want to. At least not on our budget, you don't. But they're going to be moving to San Francisco. So we've got to start making some plans. How are we going to work that in? If they go to San Francisco and say my wife and I, we can't afford to go see them for Christmas. Or we can't go forward to see them for a period of time. Uh, and maybe it's scheduling, maybe sick parents, whatever that may be. What, what, but we want them to come to our home. We want them to come back home and know that we're family and, and come back to the main home where the parents are. What do you do? Well, here's one of the best things I can think of we could do. We could say, okay, you know what? We're going to send our daughter. Jody and I can't go because it's time, scheduling, and finances. But we're going to send our daughter to them, and she's going to take some of our home to them. Just to let them know, home is here. 
And you're welcome anytime. So we send Paige, and we send Paige with a couple of goodies, things that they kind of grew up on like. And, and so we send some smoked sausage that I've smoked on the smoker. And uh, uh, Jody sends, sends uh, uh, some, uh, uh, what, what was poppy seed chicken? That was their favorite. So we sent some of their favorite stuff home. What better way is there to do that? If you look through history, many, many times when uh, another kingdom or an empire was trying to make connection with or get along with or maybe create a treaty or, or to a cooperation, they would send a family member from the ruling family to the other kingdom. And when he would go, he would be representing that family. He would go and he would normally take gifts from the kingdom he came from. Those gifts being reflective of the empire that they came from. So they might take, take spices or jewels or gold, but they would go and that family representative would go and try to create a treaty or whatever that may be. Sometimes they even sent somebody over to marry the fa in the family, didn't they do that? And again, it was, to, it was to connect two empires. Think about this. God sent Jesus to us representing the kingdom, heaven, representing heaven. God said, I'm going to send my representative. I'm going to send, oh, I'm not going to send Gabriel. I'm not going to send anybody, but I'm going to send my son. I'm going to send Jesus to represent my kingdom, bearing gifts. What gifts? What gifts did Jesus bring reflecting the heavenly kingdom? Love. Jesus came Bearing love, the gift of love, unconditional love, love that said no matter what you look like, no matter what you've done, no matter who you are, no matter your color, no matter what, unconditional love. He, he, brought, he brought acceptance. He brought forgiveness. The gift of forgiveness. He, he brought healing. Jesus came with that gift of healing. Here's part of the kingdom. I, I'm bringing it to you. I'm revealing it to you. I'm bringing you healing and new life. Eternal life. Jesus said, I bring the gifts that reflect your home. God said, I send my son to get you prepared so that you can come to your home. We can celebrate Christmas because God, because God shares his home with us. Number three, we can celebrate Christmas because God gives us a spectacular gift. We can celebrate Christmas because God gives us a spectacular gift. Yes, he gave a son, but I'm talking specifically about the Holy Spirit this morning. A wonderful, wonderful gift. Now, Go to John chapter 15, if you would please. Go to John chapter 15. And hang on to John, because we're going to look at a couple of things in John. John chapter 15. And I want to go to verse number 26. 15, 26. When the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, that is the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify about me. We're talking about the Holy Spirit. God sent us a spectacular gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit. He sent him to us. Not only did he send him to us, he sent him to stay with us and in us. Go to chapter 14, verse 17. And a lot of you remember all this that we studied about the Holy Spirit. Chapter 14 of John, verse 17. That is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it does not see him or know him. But you know him because he abides with you and will be where? In you. So not only did God send the Holy Spirit, but Holy Spirit lives in us. Spectacular gift. If we could celebrate Christmas for something, the gift of the Holy Spirit is reason enough. I talked a little bit last week, if you remember, I looked over at Megan, who was great with child. <laughs> I'm going to guess that's why she didn't sing last night and, and why she's not here today. She is great, great with child. We were talking after the service. I said, Megan, I hope you didn't mind me 
kind of pointing at you, Sunday, and talking about your baby. She says, oh, no, no. And, and I said, are you getting a lot of that kicking stuff? And she said, yes, think about this. Think about this. Yeah, I don't know. This just, just gets to me for some reason. I don't know. Maybe because I've never been pregnant. It's <laughs> a good thing. Uh, every time the baby kicked, that was Jesus kicking. I just, it just blows my mind to think that God's in you kicking. And when, when the baby would turn, that was, that was Jesus turning, God turning in her stomach. And when the, when the baby would push and that stomach would move, that was, that was God inside pushing. And then I thought of this this week. The hiccups. Remember the hiccups? I don't know if all babies do that, but I can remember Jody would say, the baby, the, well, the boys or the pages got hiccups, and you could put your hand on you, you feel go boop, boop, and it was hiccups. Am I right, ladies? I'm not making something up. The babies get hiccups. Could you imagine Jesus in you with the hiccups? That just intrigues me. Let me tell you. When you kick the football or kick someone, let me tell you, Jesus is in you. When you push the lawnmower, Jesus is in you. When you're twisting and turning with jazzercise, Jesus is in you. When you hiccup, Jesus is in you if you've given your heart and life to Christ. When you cry, Jesus is with you. When you mourn, Jesus is in you. When you laugh, Jesus is in you. When you celebrate Christmas, Jesus is in you. When you stand around the Christmas tree or sit around the Christmas tree, which we're going to be doing shortly. When this service is over, I'm headed to the house. We're going to be around that Christmas tree. You know what? Jesus is in us. Who said yes to Christ? When you share the joy of being with family today, Jesus will be in you if you know Christ. I call it the extreme Emmanuel. God with us? You bet He is. He is in us. What a spectacular Gift and a reason to celebrate Christmas today. Number four. Number four. We can celebrate Christmas because of His joy. Now, how many were here last night? Let me just show me your hands. Okay, a good part of you. I talked about some of this last night, and, and I just want to allude to it again because I, I think it's really important. We can celebrate Christmas because of His joy. Now, now go to Hebrews chapter 12. Verse 2, if you would please. Hebrews 12, uh, verse 2. In fact, I may just go ahead. In fact, I'm going to read from verse 1 and maybe read through 3. Okay? Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 through 3. We can celebrate Christmas because of God's joy, His joy. Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith. Now listen, look at this. Who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. My emphasis is verse 2, who for the joy set before him endured the cross. What I shared with the group last night was this. We did the Lord's Supper last night. And we talked about the Lord's Supper being normally a, a somber time, a, a deeply reflective time, a, a, a time we, we don't really think of it as being celebrative. But last night we approached it in a celebratory way. Because you see, we, we, we think of, 
of Christ being born to die as a sacrifice. Listen, do you understand when Jesus was old enough to understand as a child, he knew he had been born to die. He knew, he knew he was a walking sacrifice. He, he had a plan and a purpose. He had goals and he had things to achieve for God. God's plan for him. But he knew ultimately he was born to die as a sacrifice. And listen, it wasn't that, that he didn't have a choice and it wasn't because things were out of control and he had no control on that. He had total control. He could have stepped away from it. He could have said, God, I don't like it down here. I want back into the kingdom. And he could have gone back and he could have taken heaven right back up with him. He was God. He could have done that. But no, he came to fulfill God's plan and purpose for you and for me. And when we look at this, we go, joy, joy how could there be joy knowing he was walking to the cross to die a horrible, bloody, ugly, messy death? Here's how. Jesus' joy was this. He was looking past his death and looking at the time he was going to be reunited with the Father. The joy of going back to the Father, back to his heavenly home where we get to go someday. Also the joy of this. He approached death with dignity. He approached it willfully. He hated the shame. He hated the shame of taking the world's sin upon himself. He hated the shame of that. But he endured it. And he accepted it willingly. Why? Because he wanted to receive his reward and his glorification. You see, when Christ fulfilled what God had given him to do, he was bringing glory to the Father. He, he was revealing the manifest characteristics of God. By his life, by his obedience, by his miracles, and ultimately by his death and resurrection, he was bringing glory to the Father. That brought him joy, great joy. And you see, Jesus also wants to be glorified. In fact, if... Well, I, I, because of time, I'm not, I'm not going to do it. We're, we're going to hold off on it. But Jesus wants to be glorified. He wants to be exalted. He even prayed to the Father. He said, Father, I have exalted you. I have brought you glory by my obedience. He goes, now glorify me too. Jesus wants to be glorified. He wants to be exalted. And guess who gets to do that? We do. And so you know what? Jesus had joy bringing glory to the Father. We get joy bringing glory to to Christ, and we also have the joy of looking towards our heavenly home, just like Christ did. The joy. So, we can celebrate Christmas because of His joy. Lastly, we can celebrate Christmas because He loves the praise of His people. Last night we sang happy birthday to Jesus in the church. Did anybody have trouble doing that? Good. I'm glad. Um, I even made the comment, I believe we brought a smile to Jesus' face. You know, he, he's, not a, he's not an old ogre that sits up there and just looks to, ready to pounce on us. You know, Butch? He loves us. And we bring him joy. So when we sang happy birthday, and we sang the carols this morning as we praised him and celebrated his birth, we brought him joy. Isn't that a good thing? We just bring joy to him. And he, he, he loves the praises of his people. I, I'm reminded of Psalm 147, verse 1. Let me just read that to you. Psalm 147, verse 1. Praise the Lord! Exclamation mark. Praise the Lord! Let me say it again. Praise the Lord! That's what the psalm says. Praise the Lord! For it is good 
to sing praises to our God. It's good. For it is pleasant and praise is becoming. Now I'm going to read it again. Praise the Lord. For it is good to sing praises to our God. For it is pleasant and praise is becoming. Now listen, I'm just going to tell you. When I see somebody sitting in the, in the pew and this choir singing and we're singing along or whatever that may be. And they sit there going. <laughs> praise the Lord. It is good to praise the Lord. I just want to encourage you. When you sing, when you're singing the Christmas song, and we're going to sing a Christmas song before we go, I just want you to think about it this morning. God loves the praises of his people. He loves us to celebrate. Now, that's done in all kinds of ways. Does that mean we've got to be outspoken and, and, you know, yelling loud and acting crazy? No. Is that appropriate? Sometimes, yes. But you also can praise God in quietness and in your heart. The main thing is he loves the praise of his people. And we can celebrate Christmas because he loves the praise of his people. Simple message. Just simple. Here's the good news. It's Christmas. Celebrate Christmas. Enjoy it. Enjoy family. Enjoy the presents. Enjoy being around the tree. But enjoy Jesus and celebrate his birth and have joy in all the things we've talked about this morning. It is a great Jesus that we serve. And he loves for us to celebrate with him. So I hope you got a reason. If that's not reason enough, come see me after the service. I'll give you some more reasons.